Hello everybody, Thy Lord Root here, and we are back for another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. We're at episode 3. I decided that my videos were getting a little bit on the long side, so um, I figured I'd go ahead and try to keep this one a little bit shorter. Maybe um, do one task in the video instead of multiple tasks like we've done before. And because our manned program is still grounded or whatnot, um, and we haven't explored space planes or whatever, I decide a good thing to do would be to create an unmanned aerial vehicle. That is to say, a UAV. So while we wait for this to load, and I have noticed since the last version, um, Kerbal Space Program does seem to take a little bit longer to load. It is a little bit laggier. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe they, um, have, um, a little bit less optimization in the new engine, but we're already here, so, um, let's start out with, um, one of these, um, RC-001S, uh, guidance units, which will be our unmanned probe core. Now, there is something that has changed, um, between versions that I did just find out about. And that is the fact that manned vessels also require um, power as well now. So when we do bring our space program back, we'll have to think about it. Um, as far as this vessel is concerned, um, we pretty much um, just need um, to do what we've been doing, which is to add power to this vessel. So we're going to start out with the radial battery here. And we're going to throw on a couple of jet propellant tanks. Now we can use um, the regular tanks, like the that are used for rockets and everything. But in reality, um, we might not want to do that because, I mean, we get about 150 um, units of liquid fuel here, and compared to our other. Um, tank, we get about 180, but we're also carrying oxidizer, and that makes it a little bit more massive, so we get a little bit less than twice the fuel by using, um, this rocket propellant, because, um, as y'all might have guessed, um, jet engines, which will be powering this, um, don't really need oxidizer, because they're operating in the atmosphere, so we will go ahead and we'll stick on this jet engine right here, um, and it seems to actually be a little bit better than the other one. This one does get a whole lot more power out, and, um, on the one hand, we do get more ISP out of this at sea level, but on the other hand, um, we do end up, um, with a little bit more power, although I guess for something like this, we probably want as much fuel consumption or as little fuel consumption as possible. So we'll go with the regular one. And because this is a jet engine, we need um, an intake. And so there are two or three intakes here. I'm going to use um, this ram air intake because. Um, uh, while we do seem to get a little bit more intake air, um, it does seem to be the case that we, um, at least on the forms, it seems to say that, um, we do get a little bit more, um, with this, although, um, it may be a little bit more efficient, you know, at lower speeds, but, I mean, we're pretty much, um, at the point right now to where, um, I mean, I think it looks cooler, so I'm gonna put it on there. And we also need control surfaces, right? So, um, something that is actually pretty important to do here is to bring up both our center of mass and our center of lift. And I guess before I do that real quick, I am going to, um, also put on an SAS, because these things seem to fly a little bit better, um, with SAS on. 
So we'll just stick that here, and it'll have the advantage of also shifting our center of mass forward a little bit. So, um, our center of thrust is still good. Um, we're going to go ahead and put these wings on, and the wings are a little bit tricky. Um, depending on where you put them, your aircraft will behave differently. So we're going to, um, um, look at the center of mass here. And the deal with the center of mass with relation to the center of lift is depending on where we put our wings. Um, for instance, if we put, um, our center of lift forward of our center of mass, it'll want to pitch up a little bit easier. But we'll have a little bit less control. And, um, that won't be so good during the launch phase. Um, there's also our ability to put the center of lift behind the, um, the center of mass. So that'll cause our engine to want to lift up, which will push us down. So, um, I've seen people pretty much make the recommendation that we need to be somewhere slightly behind our center of mass for most vehicles. For um, vehicles with very little thrust or at low velocity, we could do center of mat or center of lift in front. But I'm just going to stick it right here in the middle, just a little bit behind. We could also angle our wings and change our attack angle, but I, I tried that a little bit earlier, and it just doesn't seem to work that well. So our wings don't move, so we need control surfaces and we have these little flaps that we're going to put on and that will help us in the long run. So um, we can now roll and we can um, we can pitch but uh, yawing is going to be a bit of an issue so I'm going to stick on one of these winglets here for y'all because um, it does seem you can put a little bit of a shorter wing on here and it does seem to, to help a little bit but um, this thing seems to respond pretty well and this is a pretty light craft so we do want response and so um, we're gonna of course need something to um, move us along the ground while we're taking off. And in order to do that, we'll just use this landing gear here. So, um, because we have symmetry mode on, we're just gonna plonk four of these things down, and I think it should work pretty well. I'm gonna rotate the front gear to, um, match more or less most of the, um, most of the, um, thing, or whatever, most of the, the vehicle, and then our center of lift is moved, so I'm gonna move that a little bit more to the center of mass, and now I'll put our, um, our wings, m oddly enough, a little bit forward, so our vehicle is now, um, aerodynamically centered, which is pretty nice, and um, one thing we have to worry about as well is power, because um, this is a space probe, and even if it weren't, the new changes would affect that. So there is um, there is a bit of an issue here to where um, we could attach solar panels, but then this thing could only fly you know, when the sun's out, and it's clearly dark out there right now, so what I'm going to do is I am instead going to um, add these radio thermal generators, and what's cool about them is that uh, they can go even when it's dark. And so, um, I have no idea what the mass of this thing is, but um, it is worth uh, looking at, so um, I'm sure we will probably get to see the mass whenever we, um, uh, whenever we, um, you know, fly the thing, so until then, 
um, I am going to um, save this, and we're going to give this thing a shot. Maybe do a little bit of exploration and then try to land this thing. So apparently, you can in fact hook up a joystick to KSP and fly these things with the proper joystick. I don't personally have one because I don't play a lot of flight sims, and I don't really feel the need to spend the money to get one, because, I mean, I guess I could spend the money on a decent one if I wanted to play maybe something like Orbiter, which I may, I mean, it's a cool premise, Orbiter, but I don't really feel like spending the money on one, and I'm quite comfortable with the keys, so, um... We'll just wait for this thing to simulate. Um, we're already, it seems... I don't know if this thing is actually pointing in the right direction or not. I don't know if this thing points directly east. Uh, we are moving a little bit, which surprises me. I'm just going to stop that, because we shouldn't be moving. I'm going to go ahead and turn on SAS, because that seems to help a little bit with stability, and we're going to take off. So let's go ahead and launch. Um, we should get a pretty decent um, thing going on. I've noticed here that it's not all that easy to pitch up, although that may have to do with the way that my... Uh, craft is designed, so... Um... Wow. That was pretty weird there. We're, you can see we're not using really all that much fuel. We're using 0.9. That's probably due to the specific impulse that we have, and... Um, I'm just gonna go over here see what's around here. Um, because, to be honest, I don't know what's over here. Well, I mean, I do, because I recorded this video a couple of times and figured, you know, y'all probably would have wanted to see a, a space plane that worked. But, I mean, I haven't really gone too far with it. Um, y'all will probably see that we will, you know, come across some other sign of civilization. I mean, I thought that you know, pretty much the Space Center was the only thing on the planet because it's, um, apparently the case when you launch. I mean, you can't really see anything else, but, um, I mean, in reality, like, there does appear to be another sort of thing over here. You can already kind of sort of see it, um, and we will wait to see what that is. So I'm just going to fly level here. One thing that I do want to mention is that SAS seems to work a whole lot better in this new release. It seems like, um, but more or less that SAS, um, seems to, um, to be able to allow you to, to set your um, heading a little bit better, which is nice. Uh, I mean, I think that that's a pretty cool, nifty sort of thing, because in version 20, which is what I recorded the first video with, you might have noticed I was, um, messing around with my SAS a little bit to try to, um, to get, you know, um, on a precise heading, and only really using it whenever um, I wanted to lock into a target. And it does seem to be much improved. So, this looks like another landing strip. I don't, maybe if I, I might attempt to land here. And if I can get my, um, my heading done correctly and my velocity down, maybe I could actually do this. I am coming down pretty fast, so, um, this is a little bit, um, 
probably not the best way to approach this. I definitely... I don't think I'm going to make it. I think I'm a little bit too far off course. Although I could be wrong about that. I mean, it's... you can never tell. And there's also the question of whether or not I could actually get back up. I mean, I don't really know if that's the case or not. It looks like we're just going to miss the runway by a hair. So I'm just going to, to go back up, gain a little bit more altitude, and um, maybe after a little bit of explore, oh, you know, of exploring, we could uh, potentially, you know, try to land at the space center proper. So. Um, the one thing that does seem to be a little bit odd about flying these things is that that you seem to, I guess, um, the controls are a little bit different. Um, I mean, you don't, for instance, you don't roll whenever you, um, you know, you hit A and D, you, you actually yaw. And so to roll, you actually use um, Q and E. And I've found with SAS, um, let me just bring that engine down the shade. It is causing me to, uh, to pitch up a little bit more than I'd like. Even with our, um, our thing in the center. Maybe if I use fine control, it'll be a little bit easier to to level this thing out, because we do want to be level when we land. I mean, you could see this thing probably in no small part due to the fact that um, we are actually, you know, um, a little bit um, We're running out of mass, first of all, and our center of mass is shifting because of that. And we're already beginning to, to stall out. I mean, it's... It seems like, depending on the way you fly this thing, um... It does seem... Um, possible to, you know, accidentally, you know to get yourself in a pretty precarious situation. And so I guess the question is, can I land this thing? And I think the answer to that is probably yes. But it all depends on whether or not I can um, get the heading I'm looking for, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut my engine so I can pretty much, at this rate, um, I can just start pitching down a little bit, hope that I reach um, where I'm going for, and perhaps even if we look at the map, um, that doesn't help us much. But, um, nonetheless, um, we do have the, um, the potential of landing. I just have to bring down my climb. I need to start falling, in fact, so... This seems to be one of the issues with planes, is that, um... See, now this thing wants to climb. And that is not really what I want to do. What I would prefer to do is um, to level this thing out and to hopefully, you know, keep this thing level. Now, there, there may be a way, or at least I'm hoping there's a way, to, um, 
to, you know, to pretty much um, assign certain control surfaces to certain action groups, and that would be cool because whenever I yaw, the trouble seems to be that um, it wants to use um, it wants to use my um, roll control surfaces in order to to make that happen, and that's just that's going to cause me to roll whenever I yaw. I mean, that's unacceptable. So, I mean, maybe there is a way we can change it. That's something that, um, I am going to have to look into in the future. Let's give ourselves a little bit of velocity. We're, we're not really on the right heading here, are we? And we will just slow our descent down a little bit. Just using, um, very carefully using our, um, our engine to, to keep some sort of semblance of motion going. And now that I'm here near the, the ground, my plane wants to pitch up, so, um, I'm just going to have to very, very slightly pitch this thing down. Now I think my approach is possibly a little bit too low. So this is a bit, in my mind, of, um... of an art. I guess, getting these things to, um to fly the way that you really want them to. Because you see now I'm I'm rotating and that and gaining altitude at the same time and that is not something I want to happen because I'm trying to land this puppy. Which I may be able to do but I have to to be very careful about this because um The hope here is that, um, I don't end up crashing, and will I hit the runway? And the answer to that is, of course, no, but I will possibly touch down on the ground here. I'm already hit the, the ground, and we can kind of pretend that we didn't miss the runway. See, we'll just say that I made it on the runway eventually, but yeah, we'll hit B to break, and our um, space plane has landed. And if we want to, we can take off again. Um, I don't really feel like doing that right now, because to be honest, the space planes are a little bit interesting, but they're not, in my mind, as thrilling as the rockets are. I mean, the the space planes um, do have the advantage that, like, you could theoretically keep this thing flying um, for as long as you needed it to um, with that low fuel consumption. But they're they're so far difficult to design, and it's it's a challenge up to a point. But I'd call that a success. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the space hangar, and let's see. Maybe if, um, before I finish up, if we can remap those controls, because that is a bit of an issue, um, with our control surfaces that might make this thing a little bit more maneuverable. If we get this thing just to roll, whenever, um, you know, we're, um, we're in the air, that might make it a little bit easier to fly. So, um, let's see what we have. We have action groups, we have parts. That's the thing over there. Um, maybe we go to action groups. Um, that does not seem to work as well. 
but um, maybe there's a way to do this. Another thing I completely forgot to do, but that I will show you, and this may actually have to do a little bit with the reason my performance was suffering, is I completely forgot to bring my landing gear off. So the thing about that is, and I think, um, I'll just go ahead and launch again. I think this thing might be a little bit easier to control if we bring up our landing gear, because we do have that drag on the bottom. And that's going to be a bit of an issue for us, so... We will just try that real quick, because ideally, um, we should be flying with our landing gear up if, you know, we're trying to save fuel, and I bet when we do that, that we will save on even more fuel in addition to gaining control, so let's go ahead and try this real quick, and then I will go ahead and let y'all go, so engine is all the way up, SAS is on. And we will just attempt this flight, bring up our resources, see if maybe our drag does not go down a little bit. Make a bit of an attempt to keep this thing on course, because it does want to go the opposite way. So if we hit G, that'll retract our landing gear. And, um... It did seem to have a small effect on our fuel consumption. We went down from, it looks like, 0.10 to, um, to 0.9, so th that will keep our, um, our plane flying a little bit faster. Or I guess not a little bit faster, but a little bit further, and we do seem to be, um, right at the same speed. I don't know why that is. Maybe there just isn't enough drag on this um, aircraft to really make much of a difference. But, um, I mean, it kind of, sort of, but it still wants to pitch off, which is really weird. Incidentally, um, we can put this thing on time warp, it causes SAS to, to freak out like crazy, apparently, but, um, you know, we can get to a fairly high altitude, and we may even be able to, um, see, I'm stalling now, maybe I should turn off SAS, I mean, it seems to, um, to not help at all, we've gotten to the point right now to where our engine is useless, so we're just, at this point, we're just gliding, um, and spinning out of control because, um, there's no air up here. I mean, there's enough drag, I suppose, to cause a bit of a problem for us, but... Because we are rotating a little bit, and we have no other means of controlling our rotation, I guess, aside from potentially, um... You know, maybe even, um, using our torque in our cockpit. But without that, we're just kind of dead in the water, it appears. So, of course, that may be due to the fact that we actually don't have any intake air. And I'm thinking if we had more intake, then it wouldn't be so bad. But, I mean, we're still losing altitude fairly quickly, and I think maybe we can put this thing down. I, we're either over the ocean or we'll hit land pretty soon, so um, maybe we'll just set this thing down and, and call it a day. And so I'm just going to lower my altitude here. And I imagine, um, this is probably not the best way to fly a plane. 
I mean, I don't know if this is really the way to lose altitude or not. It makes the most sense to me. But then again, I mean, we are in an orbital velocity. We're not orbital. Well, I guess it's kind of vacuously orbital in the sense that we're not in a circular or elliptical orbit. We're in a parabolic orbit. But I, I guess, I mean, if you wanted to be technical about it, yeah, I mean, I guess that's what a ballistic trajectory is, but I don't think most people would call it an orbit proper, and I mean, to be fair, I think my usage of that term in that manner does it a disservice. So, um, yeah, I think um, I'm going to maybe do something like picket myself for my insensitivity towards the proper usage of the term orbit. Anyway, um, we're losing altitude, and um, maybe we will... It looks like we could potentially get to land pretty soon. We're more or less going east. I mean, if we look at our inclination relative to the moon, I mean, we're, we're doing okay on that. It's um, probably not the best inclination to have, but we're not going into orbit. We're trying to land, so I suppose the best rule of landing is finding a place where you can actually land as opposed to trying to get into a decent orbit. And our rotation's a little bit jacked up here, so I'm just going to bring that down. I'm hoping I'll trim the engine a little bit, um, and trim it down to maybe about half here. There's Even with fine controls, this thing is not all that easy to rotate. It'd be kind of cool, like, if you could put into SAS, um, the trajectory that you want to go, and this thing just does not want to leave 45 degrees. I don't know why that is. Maybe I should cut my engine entirely, because maybe that'll help me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not really taking the path of least resistance, am I? Uh, you know, am I? And that's not going to help me here, because I'm probably... I don't even know if there's wind in this game. But it's probably not going to help. We could probably glide a little bit of the way. Oh wow, that leveled me out. Maybe, um, what that can do for us is I'm hoping that will get us to land pretty soon. And so I'm just going to kick the velocity up on this thing and hope for the best. And when we see land, I'm going to try to land this thing as soon as I can. I'm going to keep our, or our height, our altitude, suicidally low. I mean, I don't think that most pilots would consider it a good idea to fly under, you know, a thousand meters or so. Because there does seem to be the, um, there does seem to be the, um, the possibility that, um, this thing could theoretically just crash and burn. And we are slowly losing altitude, I wonder just how close we are to, um, to hitting, you know, some kind of landing thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, if 
we speed up time a little, I bet we're going to lose a bit of stability. We're gaining altitude just very slowly. But we are beginning to see land, and I consider that a pretty good sign because... Oh! Well, now I'm just slightly off, but I do see land over there, so I'm... I'm just going to go ahead and, um... bring this thing over there. I'm... I really do need to figure out what's causing my... Whoa! Yeah, this thing is... now becoming much, much more difficult to fly. I, I reckon if I head over to the east, then we can just be done with it. This is a thing, the problem that I ran into last time when I was trying to, um, to mess around with a similar vehicle is that, to a certain point, I mean, this thing takes off pretty well and it starts out being controllable, but to a certain point, it just doesn't seem really to want to um, to remain stable. And there's issues there that if I could get this thing perfectly balanced, then it probably would not be too terribly hard to maintain um, any sort of... Um, any sort of heading, but turns in particular seem to cause the most trouble for me. And as you can see, when we turn, um, oh, uh, why am I? I'm supposed to be going down. That is really weird. And so begins the battle for control now that I've turned off SAS. I mean, this thing is, even with fine control, this thing is not the easiest thing in the world to fly because you get below the horizon and um, it has trouble maintaining altitude. So um, the time control obviously does not work all that well because um, when you do try to fly with it, the thing just goes absolutely haywire, and you can't really do much about it. I mean, it's probably, um, not the world's easiest thing to do. So, I mean, I'm just hoping that at this point, that by heading towards land, I don't end up, um, crashing this thing, because... I mean, I guess at least if this thing crashes, nobody will die, and... I mean, I guess there's really no fun in that. As morbid as that sounds. But... I mean, really, I mean, you know... It's not a big deal if this UAV goes down. I mean, it's... It's already proving to be a bit of a pain in the ass, and I mean, it's going to get to the point, I feel, that this is going to be something that the Kerbal researchers, or the Kerbin researchers, are going to have to work with in order to maybe derive anything useful from it. I mean, I guess at least now they can, you know, um explore the planet and maybe casually spy on their citizens, but... I mean, there really isn't going to be much of either going on until... probably until we figure out what's going on with the control issues or how to rectify them. Now, one thing I could try to do... is I could try to turn off Torque. But I'll bet you if I bring torque down, I might actually get an easier time controlling this thing. Because 
torque essentially makes this thing just a little, a little bit, um, more prone to, um, I guess to spinning out of control. But I was sick of that ASAS should, for the most part, keep me level. Or maybe not level, but it should use my control surfaces. I was thinking that anyway. But, um, I don't know if that's really the case. I mean, it's um, the only thing I'm figure. Maybe, maybe in the long run, the torque does help us because we are we are going quite. Um, quite off course here to land on this little island. Another thing that would be really cool is if there was like a proper altimeter so that I could tell where it was that I was going to land or at what height. Oh no no. And so the struggle for control begins. I, if I could just get this thing to stabilize, maybe if I push forward, I mean this, I'm a little bit amazed this thing is still flying to tell you the truth, because I'm, I'm having trouble making heads or tails of the entire thing. Did we regain control? I mean maybe I should it might have something to do with me bringing down the landing gear. So yeah, we're gonna crash and burn on this one. But it was okay because nobody got hurt. Um. Anyway, I guess this has been...